Hey, good morning. I'm glad you can make it. I'm, I'm getting behind this uh, kind of uh, the tough places. Ah, ah. Get those drips. Get back up in there. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. Now the next coat goes on a lot easier. Something about this first coat's kind of hard to put on. Um. I've got uh, the thinner for this paint, and I kind of like it like this, kind of thick for this coat. Oh, right, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to set that brush just like that. And, uh, I think I want something a little narrower, and you kind of trim these a little bit if you want to. I do, but you got to not go past that plastic there. The, the head will fall off. So I just kind of trim it down about like that. Take a little bit off. Yeah. Down off. Let's see if we can get that, get these parts here. Ah. Now the factory had the ends of this bracket machined and it, they were painted over, but uh, the blades lathe that he had, uh, somebody repainted it and they left uh, the machine surfaces and polished them and I'm going to do that. So I'm not going to paint the ends, just the, the parts that are uh, cast. Cast and not machine. Okay. See that oiler there? It, there's dozens of them on this machine. Let's see if I get that out of there. Did I just do that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is what I do. I, I just hit it. Then I take a, a rag with solvent and give it a twist. See, it's good. Then I'll take. A, I'll come back and I'll just take a pick and pick out any uh, any paint that's stuck in there and make sure that it works. I got all of these uh, ball oilers working, and some of them uh, were painted over. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of a story in itself. It kind of caused me to do some work I didn't. I didn't need to. I think the first coat of primer looks pretty awful. I really do. <laughs> I, w I was just looking at the computer and I got these hands and stuff and I saw that uh, Kember uh, uh, loaded a, a how-to video on this uh, film for it and I'll, I'll, I'll get in there and get that taken care of. Get that uh, uh, attempt to download that <laughs> and I think thanks Kemper I'm I'm uh, challenged uh, with the computers but on a gear head lathe I'm grease lightning <laughs> but I tell you what if you're fast on a gear head lathe um, the late Carla uh, 
knew a lot about these and uh, she lived in California and she says at the end of the day if you're running a Monarch versus uh, an Axis and uh, the Axis is going to beat you up a little bit. Things are a little bit heavier and harder to harder to uh, do in some in some things but like uh, you know the cross slide and moving the carriage and stuff is smooth as silk but it's like shifting those big heavy gears in that headstock you know uh, if you look at the gears in a headstock and an axle set and compare it to any other lathe, uh, there's there's absolutely no comparison the the uh, Axis and headstock is completely full of gears. I'm trying to think of the machine tool dealer. Maybe some of you know him. He's long gone. He had Anchor Machine in Port Orford, Oregon. And, uh, <clears throat> and then I, I bought my son and home from him. His name was Bill. Bill Reinhardt or something. I don't. It seemed like he sold that uh, anchor machinery and someone else bought it. But uh, man, that was a lot of years ago. But he happened to have some. Uh, he happened to have a son at home, and uh, that's where I got that. And. Uh, Bought a couple other things from, but I can't remember what those were. But anyway, he uh, he says uh, you can't stick a pack of cigarettes between the gears in an axle set. <laughs> I like those stories like that. He also said. Uh, you better know what you're doing before you get into the headstock of an axle saw. And uh, there's some differences. Uh, the uh, not only is it full of gears, it's got needle bearings on everything. It, it, it's uh, crazy. I, I think it would be very very difficult to uh, rebuild a axle and headstock and I can't imagine really needing to completely taken one apart unless a gear busted but I've never heard of it I don't know so I rattled away and almost got this painted here see that get around the side here yeah the next coat will look pretty good on there it's just getting that just getting that first one on there Okay, then I get the um, oilers, all three of them. There's that one. And I got one right there. Yeah. That's the ticket. Okay, let me step around here. Oh, oh my goodness. What fun. Let's try this. Okay. Well, not, you know, it's looking better. I got a little, I got, I got a place there. And, uh, I got the whole tail stock to do too, and uh, that's time consuming, and, and the bridge, and all that stuff, and uh, well, that's, you know, I'm doing pretty good for an old guy, I think. I think most of you old guys are doing pretty good for old guys. <laughs> Yeah, that's how that looks. It needs uh, 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 some finish coats on it. But I'm going to concentrate on this and get, get this darn thing painted because uh, the, the bare cast iron uh, rust, you know, see I got the edges and I'll just whip around. But I tell you what, I'm going to paint 
uh, until I run out of paint and I'm almost uh, out. Not very much in there. Maybe a third of it can. But uh, yeah, I'll just keep going. And uh, well, I hope you're doing good on your projects. And uh, I think this goes, you know, really pretty quick once you get going on it. You know, it's sort of like uh, you have to you have to uh, overcome the inertia of initial helplessness. <laughs> but what, you know, like, what what am I doing? You know, am I actually going to paint this thing? But um, I I really think using those sponge brushes, if you have to paint by hand, it's it's just real easy. You know, you get your hand behind these things. You know, I just painted that real e real easy. So, uh, all right, I'll, I'll I'll load this video. And uh, I'll, I'll be back with something great uh, painting related. Now I have to paint. I have to get this done. Then I'll get back to uh, exciting tool making. Okay, bye.